Hello friends, welcome to Affairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current affairs of 12th of August 2021. You can see two best images of the day but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you can download our application from the description box link. The link is given in the description box and the name of the application is Careers Cloud. And after that, you can log in with your email ID. And after login, you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. After freedom sale, you will get this current fair at very minimal cost. But we are providing 90 to 95 percent of the current fairs which can come in your exam. Every type of exam we are covering like state PSC, state current fairs. How we are covering this current fair, you can see this. We are providing you daily section. In the daily, you will receive three type of things. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format and the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. And guys, next is the weekly. We are providing three things. One is the detail. Next is the question and answer format and the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Next is the monthly section. We are providing you four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format of the current fairs, best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket PDF. It means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise the current fair in quick format. But to enhance your performance further, we are also providing topic wise current fair and we are covering 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam. It means if you want to cover all the news related to one topic just from single PDF, you can use these type of PDFs. And if you are a banking aspirant, then we are providing three things. One is the detail and second is the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy. Third is the quiz section, which is also related to banking and economy. And you can application, you can uh, attempt this uh, quiz on our application on the monthly basis. And guys, uh, we are also providing exam PDF. It means all the past current fair of 2021, you can revise from just a single PDF and this is exam PDF. And we are providing detailed budget and economic survey and also expected question and answer will be provided so that you can recall that this type of question can be formed in the budget and economic survey. And guys, next is the state current fair and to uh, enhance your state performance. If you are appearing for your state exam, then this is very important for you and we are covering every state and union territory. So guys, there is no different different prices for these subscriptions. We are providing you all these things under one subscription. You have to just download our application from the description box link. You have to log in with the email ID and you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two year. For the beginners or who are starting the current fairs, I am advising you to subscribe for two years. But guys, the price is very much low already, but we are also providing freedom sale. This is guys maximum sale till date that we are providing maximum 70% discount on the current fares either on the one year subscription as well as on the two year subscription. And the last date to avail this offer is the 16th of August. So guys um, hurry to grab this offer and uh, uh, the price is very much low after this subscription. And guys on that minimal price we are also providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. And guys uh, if you have any query you can email us on this ID or you can also call us on this number. So let's start today's current fair that is 12th of August 2021. But I am requesting you all the student that you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. And guys remember please join our telegram group from the description box link. So let's start today's section with the most important question section and here is first. Indian Air Force builds one of the world's highest mobile air traffic control towers in which state or union territory? So guys, this is the most important question because it is built by Indian Air Force and it is one of the world's highest mobile air traffic control and it is situated in India. So it is built in India. So in which state or union territory? It is Ladakh. So answer of this question is B. So one of the world's highest mobile air traffic control tower has been built by Indian Air Force in the very famous area of Ladakh which is known as Neoma area or the Neoma Valley area in the Ladakh at the advanced landing ground. So you have to remember exact place if you belongs to Ladakh. So you can see here uh, this is a kind of picture of this uh, uh, you can say air traffic control uh, station and it builds one of the world's highest mobile station and you can see here main purpose of this air traffic control station is to control the operation of the fixed wing aircraft and the helicopters in the eastern Ladakh area and it will help in controlling China's activities especially in the area of the Pangong So region area of the Ladakh and to boost surveillance in the line of actual control. So guys you can see here this is the line of actual control you can see here 
and this is pangong lake and this is the pangong so area and uh, this is the strategic location in the ladakh because one strategic location is the sayachin glacier you can see here this is sayachin glacier and uh, it is located in the eastern karakoram range and it is one of the world's highest battleground also uh, called the third pole of the world this is also known as the third pole of the world and the second strategic location is pangong so it is the world's highest highest salt water lake highest salt water lake so you can just remember these things and you can also remember about ladakh ladakh lieutenant or the lieutenant governor is radha krishnan mathur and very famous national park is hemis national park also hemis is a festival of ladakh move into next question which state has highest tobacco uses among students so it is a survey related to the tobacco and uh, this survey is conducted by ministry of health and the state has highest tobacco uses among students and this state is arunachal pradesh so this is one of the northeastern states so first rank goes to arunachal pradesh second rank goes to mizoram if the examiner is asking which state has lowest tobacco uses among students then it is uh, you can say himachal pradesh lowest lowest is himachal pradesh so you have to remember this and you can also see a union health minister mansukh mandaviya ji preside over the release of this survey which is known as global youth tobacco survey number 4 already 3 was uh, released this was the fourth survey related to global youth tobacco survey and it is a survey of 2019 and it is a fact sheet related to the tobacco uses among students and you can see here mansukh mandaviya ji presided over the release of the national fact sheet which is known as global youth tobacco survey and it is the fourth round of survey and uh, it is related to 2019 so you have to remember this and this survey basically provides national estimates of the tobacco uses among school going children aged between 13 to 15 aged between 13 to 15 year you can say 9th class 10th class students studying in the grades of 8 to 10th at the state level and the union territory level by sex you can say location of the school rural or urban management of the school so all data will be provided and age of initiation of tobacco is uh, like uh, you can say 38% of the cigarette smokers 47% of the bd smokers and 52% of the smokeless tobacco users initiated the use of tobacco before their age of 10 so this is a highly threatening thing so before the age of 60 38% of the cigarette smokers start uh, smoking cigarettes so this is very you can say threatening data so uh, this kind of survey specially we can eliminate these type of things because the main objective of this survey was formed to provide awareness and you can say uh, uh, um, receptivity to tobacco marketing and it also gives data on the tobacco uses second hand smoke assess and availability exposure to the anti tobacco things and guys you can also remember this global youth tobacco survey was conducted in 2019 by the international institute of the population sciences iips and uh, this institution is situated in mumbai maharashtra and it comes under the ministry of health and family welfare you can remember this ministry comes under uh, mansukh mandaviya ji uh, new union minister of health and family welfare harshvardhan ji retires now or you can say he resigned and uh, now new minister is mansukh mandaviya ji constituency is gujarat because he is currently a member of rajya sabha so you can remember the name is mansukh mandaviya and guys you can also remember the average current tobacco uses percentage among the age between 13 to 15 years in india was about 8.5% so 8.5% students which are under the age of 13 to 15 started smoking cigarettes so this is very threatening thing so we have to take care of these things so guys uh, you can remember the highest uses among student uh, of tobacco is arunachal pradesh second highest uses in mizoram and lowest uses in himachal pradesh and second lowest in karnataka so you can remember this thing because this is very important and you can also see this data this is again very very important move into next question what is the rank of india in the global youth development index 2020 again we are talking about youth but we are talking about at global level global youth development index 2020 and the india's rank is 122nd rank out of 181 countries so uh you can say um there is very less development in the uh, uh youth in india especially because out of 181 countries india's rank is just 100 second uh, 22nd rank so the this uh, ranking or you can say this index or the global youth development index is released by this organization which is known as commonwealth secretariat and this organization is based on london united kingdom by the commonwealth you can guess that this belongs to united kingdom 
and it is a triennial ranking guys you can remember it is a triennial ranking it means it is published after 3 years you can remember it is published after 3 years and how many countries are ranked under this index 181 countries across the six factors of the youth development these six factors you can say health and well-being, education, employment opportunities, political and the civic participation, peace and security, equality and inclusion. But you don't have to remember these six factors. The overall ranking is based on the 27 indicators across these six domains over the period of 2010 to 2018. And Singapore topped this index for the first time and second rank goes to Slovenia and the third rank goes to Norway. You can also remember the first rank that is Singapore. India's rank is 122nd. And for the first time, level of peace and security and equality and inclusion were added in the 2020 index. So remember the first time we are included peace and security and equality and inclusion. So these two things are included first time. And the bottom country in this uh, youth development index is Chad. That is the uh, African country you have to remember. And the rank is 181st rank. And guys, you can also remember that out of 156 or you can say uh, out of 181 countries, 156 countries recorded improvement in their scores. Because in 2016, the last rank was published because it is a triennial rank. It was published after three years. And uh, in 2016, index India's rank was 134. So there was slightly improvement in the India's rank because Trent India's rank is 122nd. So guys, other important ranks you can see. This is also achieved by India. You can see 135th rank. This is the rank of India in the 15th Global Peace Index. Global Peace Index 2021. And this is published by Institute for Economics and Peace. And the top country who, uh, under this index is Iceland. Next is 43rd rank. Uh, this is the rank of India in the World Competitiveness Index 2021. Again, very important. And it is published by Institute for Management and Development. But the top country is Switzerland. 142nd rank, this is the most important and this is the rank of India in the World Press Freedom Index 2021 and the top country is Norway and this index is published by Reporters Without Borders Organization. So the most important here is the World Press Freedom Index 2021. Now we are moving to next question. Which payment bank became the first bank in India to achieve the milestone of issuing 1 crore fast tag? So this payment bank already issued 1 crore fast tag and this is the highest by any bank in India. And this is guys Paytm payment bank. So guys remember answer of this question is C. You can see here it has almost 28% share as the fast tag issuer bank. Because um, you can say according to the NPCI data or the National Payment Corporation of India, around 3.47 crore fast tags issued by all banks together till the end of June 2021. So 3.47 crore fast tags are issued by all banks together at the end of June 2021 and out of 3.47 crore, only 1 crore issued by this, uh, uh, you can say Paytm Payment Bank Limited. And Paytm Payment Bank also exists as the India's largest acquirer of toll plazas under the National Electronic Toll Collection Program. Because you can say total uh, 851 toll plazas across the national and the state highways are situated, 851. And out of 851, 280 were using uh, Paytm Payment Bank Limited Payment Gateway to collect toll charges digitally. So this is a huge thing and this is a huge achievement by the Paytm Bank. And guys, you can remember its headquarters is in Noida, Uttar Pradesh. And the parent company is 197. You can remember the parent company is 197 and founder is Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Vijay Shekhar Sharma and it was founded in the year of 2015. So you can remember this is very very important. Moving to next question. Which state has been honored with the four scotch awards for various schemes or the best schemes under ease of doing business initiative? So you have to remember this is the scotch award and this is uh, presented by the scotch organization. And four awards are presented like gold, silver, platinum, these type of the awards are provided for, uh, you can say, very kind schemes for the social welfare under the ease of doing business initiative. And this state is West Bengal. So answer of this question is D. And you can see here, the awards are given by the Scotch Foundation to recognize top performing government organizations, especially in the welfare schemes. You can also remember, Platinum Award goes to uh, uh, Shilp Sathi. It is the online single window portal, especially for the artisans and the handicraft people. Gold Award, it is uh, for the scheme for auto renewal or the 
enlistment through online system of the urban area. So it is just a uh, uh, service provided by the government for the urban areas. Silver award, it is scheme for the online issuance of the trade licenses in the rural area and the e nathikaran the online system for the registration preparation and submission of the deed special in the land property area so you don't have to remember this platinum award goes to gold award goes to and silver award goes to which company or the which organization or for which scheme you have to just remember about here the west bengal guys four scotch award goes to west bengal and remember about west bengal chief minister is mamta benerji i think all the students know this governor is jagdeep dankar you can remember jagdeep dankar and very important national park and tiger reserves are there like Baksa Tiger Reserve is there, very famous. Goru Mara National Park is there. Goru Mara National Park, it is also given in the NCRT's 9th class 5th chapter. Goru Mara, one is also important Mahananda, this is also given in the NCRT 9th class 5th chapter, Mahananda National Park. Uh, very important Sundarvan, this is also one of the biosphere reserve of India, very important. And uh, Jaldapada is also there, Jaldapada National Park. So these are very very important in the West Bengal. Moving to next section, these are very important question section guys, you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link and guys we are providing you maximum discount that is 70% sale, this was never happened before and it will uh, uh, definitely never happen again. So it is a freedom sale and maximum discount is given and last date to avail this over is 16th of August, so guys hurry and grab this offer. So here is the question. JK Tire and Industries Limited has appointed whom as its brand ambassador? Again, very important question because we are talking about one of the brand ambassador and very important companies, JK Tire. So this company is related to tires. So that's why this uh, brand ambassador is also related to Formula One racing. So very simple question and very simple answer. It is Narayan Karthikeyan, the first Indian Formula One racer, also the Padam Shri winner, Kumar Ram Narayan Karthikeyan. That is the full name and he become the brand ambassador of JK Tire Industries. So you can see here the picture of uh, uh, Narayan Karthikeyan, brand ambassador of the JK Tire. And he will be the face of, of the brand and highlight the company's efforts to promote innovation and excellence in the industry, especially in the tire industry. And he was the first Indian racing driver to participate in the Formula One racing. And guys, you can remember, uh, he made his debut as a Formula One racer in the year of 2005. Even the government of India honored him with the Padam Shiri, the fourth highest civilian award in the 2010 in uh, the category of sports. And guys, you can also remember other uh, brand ambassador appointment that is, uh, you can say, Bulgari appoints Priyanka Chopra Jonas as the global brand ambassador. This is not Bulgari, this is Bulgari. Uh, v is basically in the ancient uh, pronunciation of the Italy, it is pronounced as the U. So remember, it is known as Bulgari. So Italian luxury brand Bulgari has appointed actress Priyanka Chopra Jonas as the global brand ambassador and as the brand ambassador she will be promoting the brand across the globe with the focus on the themes of the women empowerment, diversity and inclusion. So you have to remember it is an Italian company. So very important. And you can also remember Priyanka Chopra we already covered to another brand ambassador appointments like Ravinder Janeja. He was recently uh, become the brand ambassador of very famous shoe company that is known as Essex, Japanese shoe company. Vishwanathan Nan, the number one chess player from India, Worldwide Fund India Environment. He become the brand ambassador recently of Worldwide Fund India Environment. So you remember this, most important. Moving to next question. Who launched digital prayas application to offer loans to entrepreneurs or you can say the uh, startups. So this is again very important and these uh, type of the initiatives are basically started by the SIDBI and it is specially focused on the industries. SIDBI recently started Savlamban Fund. You can also remember Savlamban Fund also started by SIDBI. So SIDBI stands for Small Industries Development Bank of India and he, uh, this company or this bank has launched the program Digital Prayas an application based end-to-end uh, -end digital lending tool plot platform. And guys, you can see here, SIDBI launched Digital Prayas application for providing loans. And it is to sanction loans to entrepreneurs from the low income group, from the low income group, especially the people at the bottom of the pyramid by the end of the day. And the process of onboarding borrowers, EKYC, sanctioning the loan throughout credit score and analytics will be executed on the daily basis digitally. This is a new kind of thing. That's why this platform is known as Digital Prayas because all the things will be commenced according to the digital operations. And the post sanction documents even such as the e-signing and the e-stamping of the document will also be done digitally through this application which is known as Digital Prayas. 
and guys you can also remember that sidb also tied up with a very big company which is known as big basket that is the grocery company big basket and it is to onboard its delivery partners across the country so that it can provide loans to the youth of the urban areas at an affordable interest rate for the purchase of the environment friendly e vehicle so that the partners the delivery partners can purchase this e vehicles at very affordable cost it means very low interest rate and they can purchase e bikes or the e vans to deliver this uh, grocery to the customer so that's why it is big basket here so guys remember about sidb Sidbi was basically established in 1990. Its headquarters is in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, and chairman and managing director is Siva Siva Subramanian Ramanan. So you can just remember Siva Subramanian. Move into next question. Who became the non-executive chairman and the non-executive director of Vodafone India? So guys, again very important because Kumar Mangalam Birla, or you can say K M Birla, has stepped down as the non-executive chairman and the non-executive director from the board of Vodafone India. and uh, it is from the with effect of 4th of august 2021 so he stepped down so it means the position was vacant so that's why a uh, this position now goes to himanshu kapania remember answer of this question is d you can also see here uh, kumar mangalam birla has stepped down as the non executive chairman as well as the non executive director from the board of the board of on india and he was nominated by the aditya birla group which was around 27% stake in the board of on idea and guys the board of vodafone id has selected telecom veteran himanshu kapania as a new non executive chairman he is currently serving as the non executive director of this company now he become the non executive chairman also and uh, remember this was nominated by the ditya birla group so you have to just remember the question as in slide nothing uh, more nothing less and you can also remember these two appointments these are again very important nasir kamal nasir kamal was recently appointed as the director general of bureau of civil aviation civil aviation and security you can say bureau of civil aviation security director general is nasir kamal next is c vijayanagar we yesterday also covered from the options like he was recently appointed as managing director of hcl technology because shiv nadar resigned so uh, that's why uh, new managing director of hcl technology c vijay kumar so remember these appointments again very very important now we are moving to next question chief justice of india n v ramana launched mobile application of nalsa you have to remember the abbreviation of nalsa nalsa was established to provide why nalsa was established and now why mobile application was launched so nalsa was basically you can say uh, established to provide the benefits to the poor people so it is uh, uh, to provide free legal aid to the poor people so answer of this question is c remember nalsa was established to provide free legal aid to the poor and you can also see here nv ramana ji and uh, 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 he launched basically this national legal service authority legal service application and the vision statement and what is the meaning of nalsa it is national legal service authority and it is to provide free legal aid to the poor and the needy people and to seek victim compensation and using this application beneficiary can apply for the mediation uh, you can say track the application and apply for alternate res uh, dispute resolution mechanism and the mobile application of nalsa has the features for seeking legal assistance legal advice and the other grievances even you can also remember under the article 39 clause a of the indian constitution which comes under the directive principle of state policy the government should strive to promote justice and provide free legal aid to the poor so free uh, free legal aid to the poor is one of the directive principle and directive principle means the state has a duty to provide to the citizens so remember it comes under the article 39a it is again very important question and you can also remember about this nalsa uh, nalsa was basically established guys in 1995 and it comes under a uh, legal services authority act of 1987 so act was established in 1987 but this body was established in 1995 so its main objective is to provide free legal services to the weaker section of the society and to organize lok adalats for the amicable settlement of the dispute so guys remember it is nalsa application move into next question who released a book titled accelerating india 7 years of the modi government so it is a praise of the modi government like 7 years completed so that's why this book was written but this book was not written by one person total 28 person uh, uh, wrote this book so it means total authors are 28 so we cannot mention the one person so examiner will not ask the author examiner only can ask that uh, 
name of the book or you can say uh, who released this book and this book is released by our honorable vice president venkaya naidu you can see very interesting and very uh, you can say uh, um, statically designed cover page accelerating india 7 years of the modi government and this book is edited by one of the is officer and the member of parliament kj alphons is retired and this book is forwarded by ajit doval national security advisor currently and uh, this book is presented uh, the first copy of this book is presented to the arif mohammed khan who is currently the governor of kerala this is uh, the first copy of the book and this is presented to the governor of kerala and it is a collection of 25 essays covering 25 sectors of indian governance and the contribution of 28 authors and guys you can also uh, remember this that the book provides the documentation of the developments over the past 7 years under the leadership of the prime minister narendra modi and the book explains various initiatives launched by the modi government in the last 7 years and the book is edited by kj alphons retired is officer and a former union minister and 28 authors are very important because they are just a retired secretary of the uh, center government from the various departments and very important person is also there amitabh kant amitabh kant is also one of the author uh he is currently the ceo of the niti aayog so you can remember the name of the book accelerating india and it is uh, uh, for the achievement of 7 uh, years of the modi government and the uh, uh, you can say the programs the initiatives which were launched by the modi government during the 7 years and it is released by our vice president venkaiah naidu so move into next question which state is all set to introduce an online payment system for water supply bills in all its villages now the rural people can also pay uh, this uh, water supply bills at online platform and this state is punjab government and you can remember in 2022 there is election due in punjab as well as in uttar pradesh so answer of this question is a so you can see here punjab to introduce online payment of water supply bills in villages and you can also see this this system is being implemented in collaboration with which bank hdfc bank and uh, uh, hdfc bank has provided a technological and banking platform to uh, uh, you can say to provide online billing system and under this rural people will set their water supply bills through sms on their registered mobile numbers and online bill payment options will also will be provided through a link in the sms so by clicking on this link they can pay their bill and the department revenue collectors will also carry point of sale machines to uh, the door steps so that the those people who can't pay the online so they can pay through the point of sale machine and after successful completion of the pilot project for 7 months it means the pilot project deadline is 7 months and after uh, the completion of this project after 7 months an online billing system would be introduced in all the districts of the punjab and total districts in punjab are 23 recently uh, maler kotla was created so you can remember this this is again very important punjab chief minister is captain amrinder singh and governor is vp singh badnor vp singh badnor move into next question Athletics Federation of India has declared which day of the year every year as the National Javelin Throw Day. So, guys, javelin is now trending because of the Neeraj Chopra, one and only person. Uh, so, National Javelin Throw Day will be celebrated from 2022, and the day is selected as 7th of August. So, answer of this question is B. Why 7th of August? So, uh, Neeraj Chopra won the gold medal in men's javelin throw in the 2020. Tokyo Olympics on 7th of August that's why 7th of August is selected uh, by the Athletics Federation of India as the National Javelin Throw Day so you have to remember it will be celebrated from 2022 not from the 2021 so it will be celebrated as National Javelin Day and remember about Neeraj Chopra he became the first Indian athlete in the country in of independent history to win an athletics medal at the olympics otherwise you can remember he is the second indian to win an individual olympic gold medal after abhinav bindra after abhinav bindra uh, he was shooter and who won the gold medal in the 2008 beijing olympics and the first national javelin throw day will be celebrated in august 2022 on the date of 7th and you can also remember it is to promote javelin throw across india and uh, uh, you can also remember about neeraj chopra one very important thing that he is uh, uh, subedar he is subedar in the indian army and enrolled in four rajputana rifles rajputana rifles in 2016 remember i am repeating myself this is very important this can be asked in exam that he is a subedar in an, in the indian army and enrolled in the four rajputana rifles in 2016 
and guys you can also remember about this organization athletics federation of india uh, this was established in 1946 its uh, general secretary or the secretary general is ravinder choudhury ravinder choudhury uh, headquarters is in new delhi moving to next question satnav policy 2021 was recently in news this is related to what so guys again very important question we are talking about one policy which is known as satnav policy and guys satnav stand for satellite sat stands for satellite and navy stands for navigation so it is related to science so it means answer of this question is satellite navigation policy so answer of this question is b so you can see here satnav policy or satellite navigation policy 2021 it is the effective development of the indian satellite navigation sector and you can see the draft indian satellite navigation policy 2021 uh, was uploaded on the department of uh, science website seeking public consultation till 29th of august 2021 any type of the uh, suggestion any type of the you can say uh, grievances can be handled through this uh, uh, website which is department of uh, science website and you can give any type of the suggestion related to the satellite navigation policy till the date of 29th of august and it will ensure availability quality enhancing uses and promoting research and development and guys the key objective of this policy is to achieve self reliance in the satellite based navigation this is very important because the policy will enable participants from pan india to build new applications and technology and under this department of state or you can say department of science uh, will also push global uses of the indian navigation system that is also known as navyak navyak you have to remember navigation with indian constellation on the lines of atmanirbhar bharat initiative because private partnership uh, or pi private pa uh, uh, you can say participation will also be encouraged on the lines of prime minister modi vision which is self reliant in the technology special in the science sector and guys you can also remember department of science established in 1972 its secretary is k sivan who is also the head of isro headquarters is in bengaluru department of science headquarters is in bengaluru so guys remember these things now we are moving to next question Trifid and which state collaborate to establish a network of Vandan Vikas Kendras and five Trifid tribal parks in the state? So again, very important. We are talking about uh, uh, Vandan Yojana, or you can say the Trifid parks, and this state is guys Assam. So answer of this question is B. So the Trifid and the government of Assam, uh, specially, uh, you can say, will develop on the enterprise model for the Vandan Yojana that incorporate incorporate the components of the. forward linkages so it is for implementation of vandan yojana and it is to identify the possibilities for establishing a network of vandan vikas kendra clusters across assam and uh, it is uh, uh, just you can say uh, uh, to increase the tribal income because trifid has also proposed to develop a marketing and logistic plan for promoting tribal products from the northeastern region so it is for the development of the northeastern region and we are talking about the tribal products and it will definitely enhance the income of the tribal people and as well as their marketing because it will handle the forward linkages like you can say uh, setting up of common facilities at the district headquarters for handling packaging testing and demonstration centers for minor forest produce which are produced by the or uh, which are collected by the uh, tribes and uh, this will definitely uh, provide the income resource for the tribals because uh, uh, this trifid will uh, provide marketing support to these uh, minor forest produce which are collected by the for, uh, uh, forest dwellers so these are very important things which are basically uh, started by the trifid because it is the only organization only organization of the ministry of tribal affairs which is focusing only on the tribal community and uh, its abbreviation is tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india it was established in the year of 1987 its managing director is praveer krishna very important headquarters is in new delhi so remember this so all the things are covered but you have to remember about assam here assam's governor is jagdish mukhi jagdish mukhi and uh, uh, you can say the chief minister is himant biswa and himant kumar biswa or you can say and uh, very important thing national parks you can remember very important national park is nameri nameri national park orang national park very important rajiv gandhi orang national park is very important manas i think all the students know this kajiranga all the students know this dehing patkai guys this is recently declared national park of assam dehing patkai this is the seventh national park of assam one was recently also declared raimona national park this was the sixth national park of assam and the dibru shaikova is also there so we covered all seven yes nameri orang manas kajiranga dibru shaikova dehing patkai and raimona moving to next question 
सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम पिक्चर बेसिकली यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल हाई लेवल ओपन डिबेट ऑन दी मेरीटाइम सिक्योरिटी एंड द टॉपिक इज एनहेंसिंग मेरीटाइम सिक्योरिटी ए केस फॉर इंटरनेशनल कॉपरेशन सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी वर्चुअली चेयर द यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल हाई लेवल ओपन डिबेट ऑन दी एनहेंसिंग मेरीटाइम सिक्योरिटी ए केस फॉर इंटरनेशनल कॉपरेशन Uh, as india holds the president president uh, presidency of the united nation security council for the month of august 2021 because india is now a non permanent member of the united nation security council for the two years like for 2021 2022 so india is now doing the presidency for the month of august on the rotation basis and narendra modi presided over the maritime security debate and he outlined specially the five principal frameworks this is again very important it is to preserve and use the common maritime heritage and to frame a global road map of the maritime security cooperation and guys you can remember narendra modi was the first indian prime minister to preside over the united nation security council open debate remember this this is the most important thing you have to write on your notebook and this is the first comprehensive united nation security council document on the maritime security because a 15 member body united nation security council uh, uh, adopted the presidential statement on the maritime security which was given by the narendra modi and this is the first comprehensive united nation security council document on the maritime security which was initiated or which was given by narendra modi and it was accepted by the 15 member body and guys remember about united nation security council total member countries are 15 out of 15 5 are the permanent members and 10 are the non permanent members and time period of non permanent members are 2 years and remember this organization was established in 1945 headquarters in new york and guys you can remember india's permanent representative to the united nation is ts trimurthy trimurthy ts trimurthy move into next question it is our important question section guys you have to like this video share this video as much as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and guys please join our telegram group from the description box link and you can avail best to best offer and we are providing freedom sale this is the maximum sale that we are providing 70% discount and the price of current fares so much lowered now and you can avail this offer till the date of 16th of august so guys hurry and grab this offer so question here is prime minister narendra modi launched pradhan mantri ujwala yojana 2.0 it means the second version of this scheme it was launched first time in which year so now uh, the second version is launched or you can say 2.0 is launched but the first time it was launched in the year of 2016 this time 2.0 was launched in uttar pradesh and the first time it was also launched from the uttar pradesh so both times it was launched from the uttar pradesh now the district is mohoba district of the uttar pradesh mohoba district of uttar pradesh so guys remember answer of this question is b so you can see here prime minister narendra modi ji launched ujwala 2.0 by handling over lpg connections and now uh, uh, you can say the uh, target is an additional 10 million lpg liquefied petroleum gas connections will be provided to the beneficiary lakhs of migrant families were also expected to benefit from this scheme because under the uh, prime minister ujwala yojana of 1.0 uh we were providing the the target was 8 crore free lpg connections to the deprived household was set and achieved 8 crore now we are targeting 10 million people so uh, pradhan mantri or the prime minister ujwala yojana is a flagship scheme of the ministry of petroleum and natural gas and the tagline is swachh indhan behtar jeevan or in english you can say uh, um, uh, cleaner fuel or you can say uh, in the behtar jeevan in english it is known as good life so it means uh, uh, cleaner fuel best life or the good life and uh, this uh, you can remember it was launched on the 1st of may 2016 first time in the uttar pradesh by the prime minister narendra modi its main objective is to make clean cooking fuel such as lpg available to the rural and the deprived household and financial assistance of 1600 rupees per household given by the center to eligible household and guys you can remember about ministry of petroleum and natural gas union minister is hardeep singh puri new union minister because earlier the minister was dharmendra pradhan but now he is currently the education minister so that's why a uh, new uh, petroleum and natural gas minister is hardeep singh puri uh, he is currently the member of rajya sabha from uttar pradesh so guys remember these things now we are moving to next question so all the most important very important the important sections we covered now we are moving to the one liner important point and here is the first point so uh, two governors got the additional charge one is bd mishra second is ganga prasad give the additional charge as the governor of mizoram and the manipur respectively so guys remember uh, brigadier bd mishra who is currently the governor of arunachal pradesh governor of arunachal pradesh now gets the additional charge as a function of the governor of mizoram earlier the governor of mizoram was 
हरी बाबू खंबापति जी हरी बाबू खंबापति बट इन इज एबसेंस हु विल गेट द एडिशनल चार्ज इट इज ब्रिगेडियर बी डी मिश्रा बट ही इज ओरिजिनली द गवर्नर ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश सो रिमेंबर दिस सेकेंड इज गंगा प्रसाद गंगा प्रसाद इज करेंटली द गवर्नर ऑफ यू कैन से सिक्किम सो ही इज करेंटली द गवर्नर ऑफ सिक्किम बट ही गेट्स द एडिशनल चार्ज ऑफ मणिपुर सो मणिपुर द फॉर्मर गवर्नर वॉज नजमा हेप्टूला बट नाउ इन हर एबसेंस गंगा प्रसाद विल टेक ओवर एज द एडिशनल चार्ज ऑफ द गवर्नर ऑफ मणिपुर एज वेल सो गाइस रिमेंबर द ओरिजिनल चार्ज एंड द एडिशनल चार्ज ऑफ द स्टेट्स नेक्स्ट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ न्यू एंड रिनेबल एनर्जी लॉन्च इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन स्कीम फॉर द वेस्ट टू एनर्जी बायोमेथनाइजेशन प्रोजेक्ट सो गाइस दिस इज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ न्यू एंड रिनेबल एनर्जी लॉन्च दिस लोन इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन स्कीम to provide financial assistance for innovative waste to energy bio projects and business models this will reduce the financial burden on the beneficiaries so ministry of new and renewable energy we are talking about union ministry is raj kumar singh raj kumar singh and his constituency is ara ara is in bihar next 2021 census to be the india's first ever digital census it is by the ministry of home affair guys remember the points which i am telling you you can see here 2021 census will be the india's first ever digital census and it is the 16th census you have to remember after independence it is 8th census after independence but overall it is the 16th indian census and it is the first ever digital census this is very important and data for the census 2021 will be collected through mobile applications and will be uploaded on the portal directly that's why it is known as digital census and the data from the census will be made available by the year of 2024 25 i already covered this point yesterday in 2024 the elections are due central government elections are due uh it will be conducted in 18 languages guys out of 22 languages and english it means uh total languages 19 languages 18 languages from the 22 scheduled languages and one is the english because english is not a scheduled language language under the 8th schedule of the constitution so that's why total languages 19 out of 19 18 languages from the scheduled and one is the english you have to remember that in 2011 census was conducted only in the 16 languages including english but now in the 19 languages including english and the for the first time information of the household headed by the transgender community will be collected as a new category under the third gender it means the third gender is a new category under this census of 2021 so last census was conducted in 2011 government of india conducts census every 10 years the first census was conducted in 1971 72 or you can say exact year is 72 because it was published in 72 and first synchronized census was conducted in uh, uh, 1881 so you can remember first census in 1871 72 and the first synchronized census was 1881 and uh, after independence the first census came in 1951 so you can remember this vital information this is very very important next india and the united states of america signs mou to improve weather and the monsoon forecast so it is not important you have to just remember this line only india and which country signs mou to improve weather and monsoon forecast it is united states of america Next NABARD signed memorandum of understanding with SBI State Bank of India and the Jammu and Kashmir Gramin Bank for JLG financing JLG stands for joint liability groups Th these are basically uh, self help groups so uh, NABARD or National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development signed a memorandum of understanding with the State Bank of India and the Jammu and Kashmir Gramin Bank in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and the UT of Ladakh so it is to finance 1000 thousand jlgs or you can say joint liability groups and to enhance the flow of credit to the tenant farmers uh, you can say share croppers and the small and marginal farmers so remember about nabard nabard was established in 1982 its headquarters is in mumbai and its chairman is gr chintala gr chintala next again news of nabard nabard approves a uh, 188 crore rupees loan to goa under ridf you have to remember ridf stands for rural infrastructure development fund and it is for the construction of super specialty block hospital in goa and enhancement of the solid waste treatment plant in the goa so for two things uh, nabard provided 188 crore rupees but you have to remember this ridf rural infrastructure development fund it was uh, introduced uh, uh, in 1950 1995-96 not 1955 1995-96 to support the state governments and the state owned corporation by giving low cost funding support for the projects related to medium and minor irrigation soil conservation and the rural and the social infrastructure related project and guys you can remember new governor of goa new governor of goa is shridharan pillai you can just remember the keyword pillai here 
एंड द चीफ मिनिस्टर इज प्रमोद सावंत अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट नेशनल पार्क वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेशनल पार्क इज मॉलम नेशनल पार्क एंड देर इज वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी बोंदला वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी इज ऑल्सो देयर मूव इन टू नेक्स्ट सेक्शन इट इज आर गाइज क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे वट वॉज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ इलेवंथ ऑफ अगस्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन क्वेश्चन वॉज वेरी सिंपल इन कंटेक्सट विद द बिजनेस और द बैंकिंग वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सी आर ए आर दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज सी ए आर सी ए आर स्टैंड फॉर कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशो एंड सी आर ए आर स्टैंड फॉर कैपिटल टू रिस्क एसेट रेशो कैपिटल टू रिस्क एसेट रेशो सो आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ए वेरी सिंपल गाइज आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ए नाउ द क्वेश्चन अराइज इज वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस सी आर ए आर so capital adequacy ratio is the ratio of the bank's capital total bank's capital uh, in relation to its risk weighted risk weighted assets and the current liability you can say so uh, in formula you can say uh, the uh, car equal to uh, like uh, capital funds capital funds by risk weighted assets so this is the ratio car and it is decided by the central banks and the bank regulators to prevent commercial banks from taking excess leverage and becoming insolvent in the process so uh, the basel 3 norms remember basel 3 norms uh, stipulated a capital to risk weighted ratio is 8% this is the decided by basel 3 however as the rba norms indian scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain almost 9% of car while indian public sector banks are emphasized to maintain a car of almost 12% so uh, so that we can uh, become a uh, uh, be, uh, we can become risk free banking zone so that's why uh, that 12% for the public sector banks and uh, uh, for the scheduled commercial banks it is 9% but according to basel 3 it is 8% so guys it is capital to risk asset ratio now we are moving to question of the day very simple question in which of the five year plan in india the concept of financial inclusion was included for the first time so that maximum to maximum people can attach with the banking system so that they can avail the benefits of different schemes so guys you have to remember because currently we are not making any five year plans last five year plans was 12th five year plan and the time period was 2012 to 17 after the abolition of the uh, national development commission and the planning commission we also abolished the five year plan system so guys you have to tell me financial inclusion was started in which five year plan i am waiting your answer this is very simple and very important question so guys like this video please share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform i am hoping uh, you will provide these three things to me and please press this bell button and join our telegram channel from the description box link and it is affairs cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely and guys please remember please remember you can subscribe our current for one year as well as two years and uh, the best subscription is for two years because it is for the beginners and uh, the freedom sale is currently going on maximum discount is 70% we are providing this was never happened before and it will never happen again so uh, the last date to avail this offer is 16th of august so you can avail this extra benefit and we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ash10 so guys uh, remember don't take life so serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley happiness is the key of success so that you can clear this exam very easily with your happiness so thank you guys take care and bye bye